In a separate screencast, I describe how to solve this chemical equilibrium problem where we have more than one reaction taking place. We solve it using Gibbs minimization. And what I want to discuss here is the spreadsheet that we use for this calculation. Spreadsheet's available on learnchemie.com. And so let's, I'm going to pause and switch over to the spreadsheet. So I point out the spreadsheet tries to give details on how to use it. So notice the input values are in green. We input the temperature and the pressure on the left side here. We input the number of moles that are involved in the reaction. In this case, one mole of water and one mole of methane. And then we make guesses. So let, let's do that because right now I'm showing the answer but let me pause and put in guesses so I've guessed that the outlet number moles is one for each of the five components and therefore we calculate the mole fractions and we use these mole fractions as well as the number of moles in calculating the Gibbs free energy the total Gibbs free energy for the mixture as a sum of the partial molar Gibbs free energy. This value, minus 101.15, is what we're going to minimize using sulfur. And we minimize it with the constraints that are shown here, namely that the number of carbon atoms that are coming in, which because we have one mole of methane, there's one mole of carbon atoms, one mole of water, one mole of oxygen atoms, and because one mole of water plus one mole of methane is six moles of hydrogen atoms, the constraints that we enter in the solver is that carbon atoms leaving should be equal to carbon atoms entering, likewise for hydrogen and oxygen. So this is the difference. This is what we want to get as close to zero as possible when we solve to minimize the Gibbs free energy. So the spreadsheet has, as you see on the right, details explaining how to use the spreadsheet it lists the formation reactions what's below are the heat capacity values the delta g's and the delta h's that are used to calculate these change in gibbs free energy as standard conditions but at the temperature of interest so if i now go to data pick solver now i've already entered the value that i want to minimize minimizing the gibbs free energy the total gibbs free energy and i'm doing it by changing these five cells for the moles leaving and subject to the three constraints the three constraints are the number of carbon atoms coming in and leaving has to be same and the same for hydrogen and oxygen and then I check this box here to make the unconstrained variables non-negative. In other words, I want a solution where the number of moles is positive. That's only physically meaningful. So if I hit solve, you'll notice it says it encountered an error. So let's look at what it happens. It gives a negative value, and that's an error because we said they're positive. And so this can happen depending on what our initial conditions are. If I now, let's try 0.5. So I just change this to 0.5 and make this my new initial guess and just repeat this procedure for solver. Now it found a solution. And indeed, this, this is the correct solution. So which values we pick for our starting conditions definitely affect whether we're going to reach a solution. But I found that usually it's the CO2 that ends up being negative if I pick bad starting conditions. If I pick good starting conditions, it approaches this solution in, in one iteration. But using solver a second time seems to be very effective at arising at a solution. So you can see the spreadsheet contains... The equations used, here is the total Gibbs free energy we're calculating, the, of course the atom balances, the heat of formation, which includes heat capacity terms and the Gibbs free energy of formation, both being calculated as a function temperature. And then here I've copied the solution, number of moles out, the mole fraction, and then I've listed the mole fraction from this website, a chemical equilibrium calculator, and you notice the numbers are pretty close, so the few percent difference, and this corresponds to which values of heat capacitors you use. The spreadsheet uses values from a textbook, depending on which values, since they differ from one location to another in, in source, we're going to get slightly different results, particularly when we're doing this integration of the heat capacities over a wide temperature range from 298 to 950 in this case, and that's why these small differences exist. So the 
big advantage of the spreadsheet where we're doing Gibbs energy minimization instead of using extensive reactions, we can now add another component, say methanol, use the same approach, add in heat capacity values and heats of formation at 298, heats reaction 298 to calculate the change in Gibbs free energy at standard conditions, and then make guesses for the initial number of moles of methanol and calculate the mole fraction and include now this minimization the value for Gibbs free energy the partial molar Gibbs free energy for methanol then it can solve where now we're considering essentially three reactions that can take place but we don't have to know the specific reactions we're just going to add in the component and in a physical situation what this means is if we have a different catalyst we have different species that can form so if I put in methanol then I'm going to get some mole fraction of methanol but I can ignore that in many reactors because methanol doesn't form because we don't have an appropriate catalyst to form it.